the seed of the woman, that seed would bring forth Christ. Each seed is, uh, is being manifest too, we're told. Who is the seed of Satan? He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. I read a commentary on this that said, that this means that even Christians can be seeds of the devil. Can Christians, can believers, true followers of Christ, be seeds of the devil? It's just a total misunderstanding of what's being said. What do we know about 1 John? John is establishing in the beginning that all of us sin, but, we, uh, but when he says, he who sins is of the devil, this is the Greek verb, uh, sin is marked by a lifestyle of sinfulness. If your life is just totally overcome with sin, you're of the devil. If you reject Christ's commandments and live a life of sin, you're probably not of God. If you reject him at every turn, you're probably not of God. Okay? Part of the Gnostic heresy was what that John was battling was something called antinomianism. Anti-nomianism. Okay? Nomian, law, anti, anti-law. They didn't like the law. The Gnostics thought that salvation was for the soul only, making the body behavior irrelevant. Both at God's interest and to the soul's health. The conclusion was that you one may behave any way they like to, and it will not matter. Who would like that theology? You know, that's what that's telling people what they want to hear. Boy, you can do whatever you want to. God doesn't care. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense with God's character. John was saying that if you live like Satan, you could not be a child of God. There is a sect of antinomianism in church today. They claim that you can live any way you want to be and still be a Christian. This is not true. Is our salvation dependent on our actions? No. But because we're saved, we act a certain way. What these people do not realize is that if you are truly a Christian, the seed of God, you will live the way you want to. That is, you will live in obedience to his word and you love. I sin as much as I want to, which is, I try to sin as little as I can, okay? I sin as much as I want to. I live my life like I want to. I want to serve God. I want to love God. Why is that the case? Because I'm his child. Who is the child of, uh, who, who is the child of seed of God? Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Who's he? Just as Christ is righteous. Okay? Which is it? A or B? Pull up A. We practice righteousness, and that makes us children of God. Okay? Or, because we're children of God, we practice righteousness. A or B? B. B. Very good. Because God has chosen us to be of him, we practice righteousness. Why are we righteous? Because, righteous, uh, because Christ's righteousness was imputed or placed upon us. He was given to us. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his uh, seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. So what's the purpose of God coming, of the Son of God coming? For the purpose of the Son of God was manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. That actually should be God when it shows up, but whatever, that works. Why did Christ come? To destroy the works of the devil. What was the purpose of him being manifest? To destroy the works of the devil. The Son of God was manifest because of the works of, of the devil in tempting us to sin from the beginning. Because mankind fell from the state in which he was created. Mankind became separate from God by sin, not so God removed the sin that, uh, that separated his seed from him through the death and resurrection of his only begotten Son. See? I showed up twice there. <laughs> That he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the devil. <laughs> that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
just to emphasize on it <laughs> that he might destroy the works of the devil. All right. Example, from the beginning uh, uh, of seed, uh, the seed of Satan tried to destroy the seed of God. 1 John 11, 12. We should love one another, not as Cain, who was the wicked, uh, the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Whose seed was Cain? It was the seed of Satan. How about Abel? Abel was of God. Cain was of Satan. The devil knew he would destroy, uh, he would be destroyed through the righteous seed of the woman, so he provoked his child to kill Abel. Let's understand this real quick. Satan had a promise that his head would be crushed by the seed of the woman, the righteous seed. And who was the righteous seed? Abel. And who was the seed of Satan? Cain. Okay? Not that they had sex that created this mongoloid, whatever. It was that he was trying, his children were trying to destroy him. What do we see in John? What does Jesus call those that want to stone him? They say, we are the sons of Abraham. And what does he say? No, you're the sons of the devil, who was a liar from the beginning. There are two peoples, those of God and those of Satan. We're either born of God or of Satan. That's not something that we hear a whole lot of. But if that goes, oh, that's a little weird. I'm not real familiar with that. Start looking up the seeds and how that all came about. And it's really interesting because you don't hear too much preached about the seed of God and the seed of Satan. Genesis 3.15 was the beginning of redemptive history. The entire Old Testament when you hear people preach out of the Old Testament, a lot of times it's dare to be a Daniel. Be strong like David. What is the Old Testament mainly about? It's foreshadowing Christ and pointing towards his redemptiveness for us. Satan throughout history used his seed to try to destroy the seed of the woman. That seed would bring forth Christ. Did Satan try to attack the Israelites? Why? Because it was God's chosen people. His line was coming through there. If you're truly a Christian, that is the seed of God. If you're truly a Christian, the seed of God, you will live like you want to. That is, you will live in obedience to his word because you love him. And when you live in disobedience, him like a loving father will come and begin to discipline you and get your attention, and you will change. Or he'll step up the attention that you get. We are righteous because Christ's righteousness was imputed upon us. The Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. And finally, our spiritual heritage is irrelevant to our physical heritage. You are not a Christian because your parents are Christian. Just as the Israelites were not children of God just because they were the sons of Abraham. It was a spiritual seed that he was talking about. Now, uh, let us close in a uh, closing hymn or song. Did you pick one? Mm -hmm. CJ. We're also going to open up the altar if anyone needs prayer for anything or, or would like to spend a little bit of time at the altar that's, that's available for you guys. Do you want to spend a little bit of time for you? Say yes, please. Yes. And what song are we going to do? Above all, Andrew, is that? We'll go ahead and do song thing.